Get ready for unique, rare, and little-known treasures from the golden age of radio. You're listening to The Amazing World of Radio with Adam Graham. Welcome to The Amazing World of Radio. Happy Easter from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. And today we're going to venture into the world of old-time radio poetry with music with this series music and the muse i could not find a whole lot about music and the muse and the reader jan logan but this was one of several series like this now my main podcast the great detectives of old time radio has made the list for best podcasts to fall asleep to this particular genre of words and music to me, I think, is the type of thing that people listening during the golden age of radio would listen to for uh, relaxation. And depending on when it aired and the mood they were in, maybe would fall asleep to. With its mix of beautiful words and soothing melodies. So what I am saying is don't operate heavy machinery while listening. But if you were parents who had spent a very busy Easter day putting on your finery and making sure the kids look nice at church, getting home, preparing or eating a big meal, having had a ex- thoroughly exhausting day. This would be the type of program where you'd sit down in your favorite chair, turn on the radio, and let the soothing music and words wash over you. Let's go ahead and take a listen. From April the 19th of 1949, here is Music and the Muse, with the first poem being The Day of Resurrection. Graces, which no methods teach, and which a master hand alone can reach. Music and the Muse, blending the magic of poetry read by Janet Logan with Thomas Mancini's violin. Music and the Muse, for those who follow the star of dreams. Greetings, everyone. This is Janet Logan. Of all the glorious music that through the centuries has been written to commemorate Easter, none is more beloved than the simple hymn, The Day of Resurrection. The words were written more than 1,200 years ago by the Greek theologian and hymn writer, John of Damascus. It seems to me the first stanza alone tells the whole story of Easter. The Day of Resurrection Earth, tell it out abroad The Passover of gladness The Passover of God From death to life eternal From this world to the sky Our Christ has brought us over With hymns of victory
I dreamed death came the other night, and heaven's gate swung wide. With kindly grace, St. Peter ushered me inside. And there, to my astonishment, stood the friends I'd known on earth, whom I had judged and labeled as unfit, of little worth. Indignant words rose to my lips, but never were set free. For every face showed stunned surprise. Not one expected me. child classic about Easter was written more than a hundred years ago by Laura E. Roberts. The little flowers came through the ground at Easter time, at Easter time. They raised their heads and looked around at Easter time. And every pretty bud did say, good people, bless this holy day, for Christ is risen the angels say at happy Easter time. The pure white lily raised its cup at Easter time, at Easter time. The crocus to the sky looked up at happy Easter time. We'll hear the song of heaven, they say. Its glory shines on us today. Oh, may it shine on us always. 
at happy Easter time. Twas long and long and long ago that Easter time, that Easter time. But still the pure white lilies blow at happy Easter time. And still each little flower doth say, Good Christians, bless this holy day. For Christ is risen, the angels say, at blessed Easter time. an old poem that used to be a favorite for those school exercises just before Easter vacation. A foolish little maiden bought a foolish little bonnet with a ribbon and a feather and a bit of lace upon it. And that the other maidens of the little town might know it, she thought she'd go to meeting the next Sunday just to show it. But though the little bonnet was scarce larger than a dime, the getting of it settled proved to be a work of time. So, when it was fairly tied, all the bells had stopped their ringing. And when she came to meeting, sure enough, the folks were singing. So this foolish little maiden stood and waited at the door. And she shook her ruffles out behind and smoothed them down before. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sang the choir above her head. Hardly knew you, hardly knew you, were the words she thought they said. 
This made the little maiden feel so very, very cross that she gave her little mouth a twist, her little head a toss. For she thought the very hymn they sang was all about her bonnet with the ribbon and the feather and the bit of lace upon it. And she would not wait to listen to the sermon or the prayer, but pattered down the silent street and hurried up the stair till she reached her little bureau, and in a bandbox on it had hidden safe from critics' eyes her foolish little bonnet. Which proves, my little maidens, that each of you will find in every Sabbath service but an echo of your mind. And a silly little head that's filled with silly little airs will never get a blessing from sermon or from prayer. My foe was a giant who must be slain by the broad trail spread behind him, by its cooling ash and its blackened strain. I swore an oath to find him. I followed my foe for many a day, but he measured his pace before me, and my weary form like a torment lay on the dragging limbs that bore me. My foe one morning stood his ground. No giant, but an elf. 
A small and frightened wraith I found, who was strangely like myself. An old man going a lone highway came at the evening cold and gray to a chasm vast and wide and steep with waters rolling cold and deep. The old man crossed in the twilight dim. The sullen stream had no fears for him. But he turned when safe on the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting your strength with building here. Your journey will end with the ending day. You never again will pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build you this bridge at eventide? The builder lifted his old gray head. Good friend, in the path I have come, he said, there followeth after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. The chasm that was as naught to me, to that fair-haired youth, 
may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I am building this bridge for him. Court Hope wrote, Poetry is the art of producing pleasure by the just expression of imaginative thought and feeling in metrical language. This is Janet Logan saying goodbye until next week and hoping that you've had a most joyous Easter. As the strains of melody fade away to join with other pleasant memories, again, music and the muse is ended. Featured with Thomas Mancini, violinist, were William Sobranski, organist, Ray Kramer, cellist, and Catherine Julier, harpist. Poems read by Miss Janet Logan were first stanza of The Day of Resurrection by John of Damascus, Restricted Neighborhood by Helen Hyde Jensen, At Easter Time by Laura E. Richards, What the Choir Sang About the New Bonnet by W.T. Morrison, Giant Killer by Laban Thomas Johnston, and The Bridge Builder by William Allen Dromgoole. Musical numbers included The Day of Resurrection by Henry Smart, Angels Roll the Rock Away by César Milan, A La Bien Aimé, Christ is Risen from the Christian Hymnal, I Know That My Redeemer Liveth by Handel, Spring Song by Mendelssohn, March of the Dwarfs by Grieg, and In the Silence of the Night, Rachmaninoff. Music and the Muse was edited by John Kraft and produced by Bill Verdier. This program came from Hollywood's Radio City. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. Well, some really fine music and some interesting poems. I liked the one about the bonnet and the lady who got to heaven, saw people who were 
who she was surprised made it, but didn't say anything because she could tell they were surprised that they made it. There's some really nice selections. And I hope you uh, enjoyed it. I hope you had a great Easter. And now we turn to listener comments and feedback and have this email from Tim who writes, Regarding our Alice in Wonderland series, Adam, I tried to like Alice in Wonderland. I really did. It's one of my favorite stories. However, I could not abide Alice's voice. They really should have hired a young girl to play the part instead of a grown woman doing a little girl's voice. I lasted about 20 minutes and just had to give up. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Take care and keep up the good work. Well, thanks so much for the comment, Tim. And I'm sorry that series didn't work out for you. Uh, But... uh, It was pretty common during that era to have, uh, particularly with girls' parts, to have those played by adult women who they thought they had the range to do so. There are some exceptions, but most of the radio uh, jobs where children appeared were uh, things where uh, the director regularly worked with kids on something like Let's Pretend or that series Coast to Coast on a Bus. But at any rate, thanks so much for reaching out. I appreciate it, Tim. And that will actually be all for now. Join us back here around Memorial Day week when our summer series will get underway. I don't know what we're going to be doing quite yet. It'll be chosen by our Patreon supporters, but I will uh, let you know, and I'm sure it'll be a fun series to listen to. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.